This week on CrossFeed. Did God say to burn the Koran? Or to read it in church? Beware Christian messages at school. Or tattoos in church? Or churches of tattoos? Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religion News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Pastor Jim Butler out here in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, originally from Kansas City, which both teams beat both teams from Cleveland over this weekend. That's not really saying much, is it? The Chiefs <laughs> beat the Browns, and the Royals beat the Indians. Of course, now I really can't punch Dale too much because he's a transplant out there. But yeah. my wife's boss, his, his wife are from Cleveland and they are, he's a huge Cleveland fan. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Now with uh, being a Packer fan makes it a lot easier to be, be around here. So. <laughs> oh. so, well, I have to tell you, we had our, our rally day today. Um, mm-hmm. We had our, our puppet troop. Uh, did a, a presentation as uh, they did the, the children's message this morning instead of me. They do a, just a tremendous job. Uh, if anybody's interested in seeing it, um, it's a little bit blurry, but you can go to shepherdtheridge.org slash live and it's recorded there. Um, and uh, then we had afterward, we had our uh, picnic and a potluck kind of deal. And, and while we were, we're all sitting around there eating and this guy, um, comes walking up and, uh, and, and I thought, you know, I saw him come and I thought, all right, you know, we get people every once in a while, they come looking for money or food or gas or whatever. And, uh, and he came and he was looking for gas and, uh, and said, well, yeah, sure. You know, I said, I said, I've, I've got, I've got a gas card in my desk for you. Um, I'll go get you that, but what, go get something to eat. There's lots of food here, you know? And so he sat down and, and he had some food and that and um, talked to him for a little while and, and that. And um, and I, I gave him a gas card right away and that, but he, he stuck around for a little while and and uh, and then he, he went on his way. But, you know, it was it was such a cool opportunity because I was thinking about that, you know, Jesus said when you, um, you know, when you have a, a, a dinner to um, or a feast to to instead of inviting your friends so that they can um, pay you back and invite you back, you know, invite the, the people by the way and, um, you know, and that, and, and, and we don't do that. You know, we have our church potlucks and it's all, you know, it's all our friends and, and, and stuff. And, um, and, and so just the fact that, that this guy came, um, mm-hmm. I, I was so happy and I thought, boy, how could we, how could we do more of, of that sort of, you know, because we don't have the, the resources to do like a, a, you know, soup kitchen kind of thing. And, um, but I was just so happy that we had the opportunity to, um, you know, cause we had all this extra food. There's, there's plenty there. Everybody took lots home and stuff. And, but you know, how great would it have been if, if more people had, had come and say, yeah, here, come eat, you know, let us take care of you and, and, and what can we do for you and, and stuff like that. So those, it was just, that was the highlight of, of the meal was that we had an unexpected guest. Cool. Cool. I was gone to New Hampshire, so I didn't have too many unexpected guests and things this weekend while I was uh, up in beautiful lakes area up there, though, the real mountainous and the Squam Lakes, and went hiking yesterday up a mountain and got this gorgeous view from up there. It was really nice. It's a beautiful place to go. So, uh, where should we begin? Well, you know what? I As I was looking over the stories um, to, to pick out stories... Like ninety percent of the top stories were on the the this whole um, thing in Gainesville, Florida, about the pastor burning the Quran. All right, and it's kind of after the fact now since nine um, eleven's come and gone, and, and it didn't actually happen. But that sort of leads to I thought, you know, I suppose we should talk about it. And um, so the first story then um, I say is the fact that it didn't happen. Um. But I, I thought that it was interesting that they said 
that all right. So Pastor Terry Jones, um, from Gainesville, Florida, um, he was uh, ended up on the Today Show, and he said that it was canceled, would not take place at any time. He says we feel that God is telling us to stop. <laughs> like, so is every other pastor and church and and Christian and 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 everybody else in the whole world. <laughs> I'm glad you listened to somebody. So I think God wanted him to stop, too. Ah, don't do that! Yeah, that's for sure. Um, a lot of people, though, I was reading an article today in the Washington Post by Jim Wallace, head of Sojourners, who is evangelical, though much more left. Um, and uh, he had gotten as many people as he could uh, to try to sit in and uh, talk with him, including even the head of the World Evangelical Alliance, even also was part of this. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of... Um, this mission is too important for me to allow you to um, jeopardize it. I don't know. I, I just don't I, don't... I don't get it. You know, wasn't it, didn't we talk last week or the week before about how... Uh, Fred Phelps Church had burned a Koran on the street corner in New York, you know, and nobody really cared. Well, you know, this... Um, and, and, I mean, why why did this guy get all this publicity? Why did he... I mean, he first announced it, what, in, in July, June, July, nobody cared, you know, you know and started, then all of a sudden it just kind of... Yeah, I, I, I saw an, another article that where it all started on Twitter, that he posted... This guy posted a tweet and said, um, September 11th, International Burn a Quran Day. Right, and nobody cared. I mean, nobody said anything then. No, but it it sort of, it it, it gained momentum. The the um, the mainstream media, they it was a non-story, right? And then, um, but then people heard about it, and it word kind of slowly passed around and then um, somebody started a Facebook group in support of the idea and then a whole bunch of people started Facebook groups against the idea and um, and then it just, it, you know, basically it went viral. This is, you know, the ultimate social media this is what can happen with with social media is that it just you know, bloggers picked it up, and and it just it, it took on a life of its own. So it's really kind of it was really generated by new media. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know, and and this article was basically saying you know, new media really might want to take a cue from old media, and that is to check your sources and you know, and 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 really just kind of double check what's all going on here. I mean, because this guy is he's got a church of like. 30 people they've got no budget or i mean i don't even know how this guy afforded to um to fly out to um to new york to um because he wanted to meet with the um imam ralph the leader of the proposed islamic center in moss near ground zero right um so he flew out there with with hopes of meeting with him but not actually having an appointment. <laughs> All right. Well, you can get tickets on JetBlue or Southwest Airlines pretty cheap. I guess. Um, you know, that wouldn't have been that hard to get a, 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 a ticket for that. But, you know, he's, yeah, it's just this, this tiny little church that, you know, if if it hadn't gone viral, nobody would have cared. Nobody would have noticed. You know? I mean, I got a better one. How about instead of... You know, let's all object to this. Let's all make sure that the crazies out there in the Mideast know about it. They can go kill this guy. <laughs> go take him out. Well, the thing is, he said in this part of the article, he said in his TV interview that whether or not a meeting occurred, the Quran burning would not take place. He added the response to his now canceled plans to burn copies of the Quran, including riots in Afghanistan that left at least one person dead, helped him achieve his goal of raising awareness about Islam. All right, it didn't. It raised awareness about radical Islam, which we're completely aware of already. You know, there's that right. whole nine eleven thing. There's that whole war in Afghanistan and war in Iraq. All right. Um, there's the whole 
uh, Muslim picture, uh, Muhammad a picture thing. There's the woman who, you know, was in, you know, kind of drew, drew the, you know, started the thing of, uh, everyone draw Muhammad Day. It was kind of a joke. And now she's in, uh, hiding under protective custody mm-hmm. in the FBI. I mean, um, there, there's the, you know, the riots over the little teddy bear named Muhammad. I mean, come on, there's, you know, I mean, not even the guys on South Park will make fun of him. I mean, you know, there's this, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're all familiar with this. Thank you very much. Yeah, you really, we, we know things. It's sort of like, uh, you know, it's, let's have a national grass is green day. <laughs> Right. We, we yeah. really want to let everybody know that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it, you know, the thing is, most people also recognize, or I would hope most people recognize that at least Muslims in the um, in the West and and um, and that most Muslims around the world, even in the Middle East, most Muslims are not do not agree with all this violent stuff. They don't want to be associated with it. It's a big embarrassment for them. All right. Right. And um, it's kind of like, you know, the 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 Irish Catholic terrorists, right. you know, the Irish Republican Army, you know, with the Catholics and the Protestants fighting each other. They talk about and everything. Uh, most Catholics and Protestants didn't fight each other. and Most Catholics aren't terrorists. Right. Right. So. um, And, and so now he's he's all happy. Oh, well, there were riots in Afghanistan. At least one person is dead. Well, I guess I made my point. Well, congratulations. You're, I'm you're sure the guy's family really appreciates it. Yeah, no kidding. <sighs> On the other hand, <clears throat> the other one, though, is kind of odd. I thought odd. Well, not actually considering it's from passing the nature to Christ. Um, this is the other extreme. Who, uh, in his... Uh, um, I'm kind of upset about this, actually. There's this um, Larry, Reverend Larry Reimer, the United Church of Christ guy down there in Gainesville. And says, more than 20 religious leaders from Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, and Muslim backgrounds around Gainesville had the same Quran passage read along with Christian Hebrew scriptures at their congregations over the weekend. Now, and local synagogues made it part of the Rosh Hashanah celebrations. Now, I, I just wish I knew what the passage that he read was. It doesn't mm-hmm. say that. Yeah. It just says they all read the same passage. It doesn't say what it is. What are, I bet they didn't read it in Arabic. Probably not. But um, this guy says, it just seems that the reading of the Quran was the most affirmative thing we can do. Uh, uh, said Reimer. That's what Aaron said at the foot of Mount Sinai when they were, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we had to, we had to do something. So we just threw all our jewelry into the fire and out came this calf. <laughs> right. Well, okay. I don't know. I like, see. I'd like to know what passages he read because there are some things that you could. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I'd read it. You know, as uh, here are, you know, I, I don't know, you know, could you refer to it in a sermon? I mean, you know, I mean, I've referred to, you know, secular authors. I've referred to different writings. I, you know, I, 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 you know, as Lutherans, we, we, we differentiate, you know, things that we believe because they are true versus things that we believe in insofar as they are true. Mm hmm. And we've always said you can you can believe in anything in so far as it's true. You know, I mean, I used to, you know, I tell my online students, I said, you know, you know, we believe the Bible because it's true. Um, but you can certainly believe in you, you can believe in writing little red Riding Hood in so far as it's true. Hmm. You can believe in the Quran. You can believe in the Hindu Vedas in so far as they are true. Right. So, you know, I mean, you know, right. I mean, so I'm, what, 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 what did he read from here? Because yeah, you could probably wouldn't, I mean, it's the law that's written in everybody's heart. 
Mm-hmm. I'm sure you can find something in there that's perfectly true. Right. But that's not, you know, the this is my whole ministry. My whole faith is designed around the sense that we have much to learn from each other, that we are a common family, that our division is not among religions, but it is among fanatics and extremists on both sides that we have to overcome. All right, first of all, my religion, I don't know about his. My faith is, is designed around the sense that we have much to learn from God. All right? And while we can learn that from each other, it's really God that that's the one that we want to learn about. All right? And I can learn certain things about creation from listening to other people. I can learn certain things about God listening to other people. Okay? But in a church service, my job is to proclaim the truth. All right. And well, like Jim said, we can pull from other authors and, you know, or, or whatever, quote various people. Okay. Um, t- to make a, as an illustration. Or, or you could say, this is like this or, you know, or, or, or something like mm-hmm. that. All right. But this really gives the sense that, you know, it's like you got, and, and, you know, okay, haven't seen the actual services. All right, but just the way this article is written, it, it at least comes across as, you know, sort of like you got your Old Testament, your Gospel, your Epistle, and your Quran readings, you know. How I read. Um, you see, and I, see, I have to disagree with him because, um, you know, I can, see, I can agree to a certain part that I, I'm designed around the sense that we do have much to learn from each other, that there's a common human family. But our division is is among religions. Mm-hmm. It is. There are only two. Yep. You know, got the theology of the cross versus the theology of glory. But something tells me he's a guy who preaches the theology of glory anyway. Probably. You theology know, of the cross probably, isn't real popular in the UCC. Right. You know, he's probably out there, you know, talking about, you know, um, well, I had a member of my my congregation who was telling me went to an Episcopal church. And uh, so, uh, um, um, and th- th- there was, um, to celebrate a, a baptism of a friend of theirs, grandchild. And um, so the uh, 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 female rector there began a, uh, her, uh, had a children's message, and she brought out this flannel graph, and she said, today we're going to celebrate the fact that uh, whatever, Jamie was baptized, and that's good, and she was brought to God's family. And so how should we act as being part of God's family? And she put up thing, had one side of the flannel graph said good, and the other side of the flannel graph said bad, and, you know, well, what's good what goes good, and what goes sharing's good. This is bad, let's put this bad. And he said, at the end of it, it dawned on him, that wasn't the children's message. That was the sermon for the day. Go out and be good people. Oh, good grief. Oh. Ugh. Man. <laughs> He's like, why would I go and go to the church there? I could hear that anywhere. Go out and be a good person. So, you know, I mean, that's a theology of glory. You know, something tells me, you know, yeah, I can talk about, well, the Quran's a good book, and they're, you know, they're good people there. Because that's all, it's a theology of glory. It's the same thing. Be good. Yeah. You know, I, one of my members brought in an, an ad for one of the, like, the local mega church. Um, they're promoting Joel Osteen's new book. And uh, I can't remember the title of the book. Um, this is, I mean, they took an ad, out an ad in the paper to promote this book and, and saying, you know, come to our church, we're talking about it or something like that. But it said one of the, the one line that stuck out to me was, in the, there's like sort of three things like, I don't know, live better or whatever, and increase in God's favor. And I went, increase in God's favor. He already loves me as much as his only begotten son. How could I possibly increase in his favor anything beyond that? Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> yeah, he goes, <laughs> the, the guy that brought it in says, the only thing that's going to increase is the size of his wallet. <laughs> well, I need the word of faith, name it, claim it, market, park it guy. Uh-huh. And that's a theology of right. glory. Right. But again, you manipulate God to 
give me, you know, hand over the cash already, you know, right. ka-ching, ka-ching. You know, uh, uh, I, have you ever seen Buddy Joel preach? No, no. Although I had one of my members, um, at Bible class tonight, um, also online available, but, um, uh, I don't charge for it. So no ka-ching there. Um, but, uh, she, she commented that she watched it. She was flipping through the channels the other day and, and it was on. And, and so she decided to watch it. She said, you know, I, I've never actually sat and watched the whole thing. I've just seen bits and pieces and heard about it and stuff. So I thought, oh, let's, you know, let's actually watch it. See what it is. So he went through the whole thing. And there was no mention of the blood of Christ until right at the very end. It was, it was a, it was a gospel presentation, right? But it was like, Right at the end, and it was sort of like a, oh, and by the way, Jesus died for you to forgive your sins, you know? And it was, it was like an afterthought. I'm like, but the cross and the atonement, that should be the center of everything that you teach and preach, you know? And, but it's like, it's just an afterthought. <laughs> it is. And, uh, but that's the theology of glory. But then, we got to get back then to our yeah. Quran reading. Sorry. But you know, if you're going to do it be a theology of glory, you can you can do that. Yeah. You know, if you're going to say, well, really, it's all about what we can learn from each other, you can do that. But if we believe that Scripture is the Word of God, and that there is one way to heaven, and that it's through Jesus, then no, to read a Quran in worship is absolutely wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, anything that you do, and, and, and here's the thing, even if that passage was where the Quran quotes the Bible, all right, you say, this is what the Quran says, all right? If, if you're doing it to, to say, well, you know, here's one place where I got it right, all right, fine. But, um, but, but the problem is, is, is as soon as you present it in such a way that you say, here's truth, the Bible, here's truth, the Quran, and you put them on the same level or even close. You just you've what you've done is you've thrown out the Bible. You've you've thrown out your your whole basis for your theology because you're saying, look, I could be wrong. You guys might as well go to the mosque. You know, depending how you present it, you could do it. I mean, you know, I could present it and say again, yeah, I got. I, I would use it as an illustration. The law is written on everyone's heart. Here, here, here's evidence, you know, uh, or, you know, uh, uh, we all know certain things are wrong. Right? We can point to all these books to tell us things are wrong. Um, you know, the one thing that makes Christianity unique is the cross. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what sets us apart. You know, um, I mean, there's always the question people ask. You know, do Muslims, Jews, Christians, all of us pray to the same God or not? And I always said, well, so if you talk about the God of natural revelation. Are you a God-fearing man? Then I would say yes. What is wrong, however, is the fact that we're the only ones to tell you how to have a relationship with that God. Yeah, that's what Paul told the people in Acts 19. I see that you worship an unknown God. Well, what you worship is unknown. I'm going to reveal to you right now. Mm -hmm. You worship a hidden God. A God you do not know. We worship the God who has revealed himself in Christ Jesus. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly that. And, and but, if you don't uh, know that, you just, you, then you're still, you're still walking around in darkness. Right. And in case somebody's sitting there saying, wondering about that, in my viewpoint, it really comes out of do, doing witnessing among Muslims that I often begin, well, tell me how you have a relationship with, with God. Well, let me tell you how I have a relationship with God. But, you know, I don't ever start off and say, by the way, you, you believe a false God. You have to realize that. <laughs> that would end the conversation. Yeah, right there. Yeah. But Muslims so, would never talk about a relationship with God, would they? Well, uh, they do, because they, they're, 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 the relationship is all submission. Oh. It's all obedience. I suppose. You know, it's sense. all having to, you know, be obedient to God. It's all rules. So anyway, but I'm sure he got plenty of good rules in reading that down there, but I don't think it's a good thing to do. Of course, now the ACO, you might have other views on this. Mm, there you go. Yes, not nearly frightened enough. I know what hunts you. 
All right. So this is in Nebraska. Um, ACLU Nebraska is uh, talking to sca- state school districts and saying, hey, all right, if you're going to bring in somebody to talk about drugs or alcohol or something like that, fine. But you got to make sure that there's no Christian message mixed in with um, with their anti-drug or anti-alcohol message. Right. And uh, they specifically mention um, a couple of, of schools that brought in uh, names are Keith Becker and Ron Brown. Uh, Keith Becker talks about the death of his teenage brother in a drunk driving crash. Um, Brown's assistant football coach at Nebraska who helped found a nonprofit that spreads a Christian message. So both of them are they're Christians and they go around talk to so, Jim, Jim, have you ever had at a um seen in a public school a guy come in and sort of have a message like this that with a um a Christian message with it too? I was gonna say the guys I'm familiar with um you know will come in, do a your your standard don't drink drive don't don't get involved drug alcohol speech in the afternoon motivational speech in the afternoon something like that and then say if you want to hear more or if you'd like to hear about my faith or something like that um, come on back tonight at seven o'clock okay all right you know and and you know so now you know you go back at seven and you hear whatever it is you hear mm-hmm. But uh, but during the day, in the morning, no, you know, the, the public school somebody they haven't said anything. All right. So I had um, when I was in high school, one in particular really sticks out. And this is a guy. I mean, he had slick presentation, just you know, the big screens and you know, and and all that kind of stuff. And and he talked about um, he talked about all kinds of stuff, just kind of morality in general. Um, but he sp- did specifically mention um, uh, sexual morality. Um, and in fact, afterward, when there was sort of, before we went back to class and that, and he was just kind of wandering around and kids were talking to him, there was this girl from my class went up to him and, and read him the riot act for suggesting that she shouldn't have sex with her boyfriend. (laughs) Um, but he also had a specifically Christian message and I was kind of surprised to hear it in a public school. I don't know whether they were aware that he was going to do that or they figured they could just sort of slip it in under the radar. I didn't hear any complaints after the fact, um, but I imagine it's not the sort of thing you could pull off real often. No. Uh, again, I, no, I, boy, you were there with uh, our good friend Annie in that town there in Madison, too. Yeah, she must not have heard about that one. I guess no, she didn't. No, I, you know, I mean, I think, Legitimate, I, okay, if you have these guys giving any kind of a specific Christian message, um, then, you know, I would have issues with it, you know, because uh, that is not the, the, the place where you do that. Now, they said that this one guy, the, the, this, this article says that uh, Becker speaks about his the death of his teenage brother in a drunk driving crash. His group's website knows the talk incorporates scripture. Um, depending on how you do that, you can do that appropriately. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not, but I, you know, like I said, my, my, you know, the guys I've known, uh, one of my was Bob Lenz. Um, it was just a dynamic speaker. Um, I just really heard him two or three times just to get really good. But he said, you know, you invite me to come talk to your school. I'll talk in the afternoon and I'll, you know, do the motivational stuff. And then I'll, th- you know, say, hey, if I, if you'd like to hear about my faith life, if you'd like to hear about, every, you know, the stuff that I believe and that I'd like to share with you, come on back at seven o'clock tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, and the thing is, I could even see. If the person said... Evil will always triumph because good is dumb. I'm trying to think kind of how you could do it appropriately and kind of mixing it in there. Because, I mean, yeah, you know, like for me, I, I I have a hard time because I see everything through the cross. All right. So, but I know that, you know, what it comes down to is if... The problem is if you say, 
look, you know, this is all because I'm a Christian that, that I believe this. Anybody that's not is going to say, well, then why should I listen to anything you have to say? You know, why should I, you say you don't drink and drive because you're a Christian. Well, I'm not a Christian. So why, you know, then I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and so, you know, this, this kind of goes back to the whole natural law thing, um, that you need to, um, well, here's why, because it's wrong no matter who you are or what you believe, you know? Right. Um, and now I imagine you could probably put a little sidebar in there and say, now, you know, for me, it, it's informed by my Christian faith and, you know, um, and, and kind of keep it short and, and say, but, you know, I'm, my, what I'm really here to talk about is, is drinking and driving or, or whatever. Um, yeah, I, but I'd like to know exactly what these guys are actually saying, you know? Um, this yeah, guy I would... that, that I had, I mean, he had a whole chunk on, hmm. on, on Jesus and, and stuff. And, and I was, you know, I, I was, I was, I mean, I was shocked and, and I was just, I was in high school, you know, and I was like, what? huh? You know, of course I was so used to secular schooling that when I got to seminary, I'll never forget my first seminary class. It was actually like a pre-sem class uh-huh. and, um, that I had to take there because I hadn't had seminary classes at, in college. And, um, and he, <laughs> the, um, he says, all right, let's open with prayer. And my gut reaction was, can you do that? <laughs> like, oh yeah, it's a seminary. You can do that. <laughs> you know, but I, it was the first time I'd ever been in a, in a, a, a Christian school of any kind, you know, I was secular schools all the way from, um, from preschool through college. And, and so it was just it was like, it was, I was just shocked. I went, Oh, cool. Yeah. You could do that here. <laughs> you know? Cool. But, um, you know, so, you know, what you, what you got to deal with, I think, in, you know, this, this type of deal, I, I, I think you just got to be real careful because I think you could really, you know, wind up hurting things. I, I remember there was this one situation in Kansas City and, um, <clears throat> and they brought in this, this Christian group brought in this guy to speak and, uh, who's a very effective guy, He's a speaker, very interesting guy to listen to. And, uh, then he said, he goes, so we're getting together. Seven o'clock tonight. He goes, but uh, you don't have to worry about coming. I'm not going to talk about religion. And so these kids show up, and he starts talking about his faith, his Christian faith, and all this stuff. And you know, these kids are justifiably, and the parents are angry because they said he said he was going to talk about religion. Mm-hmm. And uh, so this place group starts calling that they were persecuted and stuff. Why? Well, when he said religion, he was talking about a theology of glory. That our, you know, religion is our attempt to reject to God. He didn't say he would talk about Christianity, God coming down to us. And I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm reading these, these newspaper accounts and I'm going, you do darn good and well. Nobody would have understood it that way. <laughs> no kid. So what freedom of religion, you know, you, if you're talking about, God right. coming down to us, then you don't have the freedom to do that. I don't know. It was just, it was just, you know, it was just the lamest thing I'd ever read. So well, that's just ridiculous because that all, all that is is, you know, then it's it, it's deceptive and um, you know, it's just going to turn people off and and send them away. Although I wouldn't right. call it persecution, but you well, know. they did. They, they did as they, you know, you know. But yeah, I I saw it as, uh, um, you know, pure deception. You know, but well, anyway, is, so, but, well, okay. I wonder if these guys have had tattoos though. Yeah. All right. Speaking of, it's not really religion or is it? All right. The church of body modification. All right. I, I heard about this, um, just recently and, and then, uh, the story was in there. All right. So we have, uh, so, I, I, is it just you? Does she have kind of a snarky tone in this article? Oh, yeah. <laughs> is it just me? This, yeah, is I mean, great. this is the Washington Post. So, you know, I was like, I, at first, because I, I copied it and pasted it to print it out, I forgot where I got it from. And, yeah. um, and, and so I was like, wow, this really comes across as a blogger, you know? <laughs> but, um, 
but it's yeah though no, it's 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 actually it's a good read it's funny um but all right so it, this is a story about Ariana Lacono a teach a teenager in North Carolina and um and she is not allowed to wear her nose stud to school because of the dress code all right but she says no this is freedom of religion because I am a member of the Church of Body Modification. Right? It has 3,500 members nationwide. And um, it is a group of people who experience their spirituality through modifying their bodies. Piercings, tattoos, scarifications, and beyond. She says her piercing makes her feel whole. I thought that's one of the saddest things I've ever read. That, that you get your, your sense of wholeness by piercing your body. So that, that just really, I thought that was disturbing. Um, oh, I thought a lot about this article to be disturbing. Well, okay. Yeah. And there was a lot of words. I mean, it was funny because in the article, she's kind of talking about a lot of these terms and, and, um, you know, I don't even know what all of those terms mean. And <laughs> like, I'm looking at these lists and I'm going, yeah, I'm not going to look up these words because I don't want to know. Right, and uh, I don't think, and you let me just say, I don't think you want too many your kids to, uh, and your 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 daughters to take part in any of this stuff either. I mean, some of it's pretty creepy about you know, people being hung up by their piercings and and hanging that way and and, and stuff like that. I saw I saw a performance artist, like I didn't see him live. I saw like an article about him. Um, a performance artist that like hangs his body from fish hooks or something like that. And, um, you know, this is like uh-huh. really creepy, but this is, this is like a, this is a, a, okay. Now it's, it's weird that it's called a church. And I, I really wish that non-Christians would stop using the word church because it, it's really kind of a specifically Christian word. Um, but it's not, this is not a theistic, um, religion. Okay. It's not like the, through by doing this you um, reach God or something like that. It's it's more about really it's it, it's more about this sort of you um, achieving a certain feeling um, by through these um, piercings and and tattoos and and all that kind of stuff. They call it decorating your temple. <laughs> okay. But here's the question. Are there limits on our freedom of religion? And that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, because here you have, she says, it's freedom of religion. I have the right to, to have this. Okay. Would she have the right to be, you know, you know, so if I'm a member of the Church of Nudity, does that mean I can go to school with no clothes on? And if I can say anything about that? Right. If I'm a if I'm a Jedi, can I carry a lightsaber to school with me? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> if I'm part of the the Church of the AK-47, can I carry a gun <laughs> to school? <laughs> yeah, you get these, you know, conservative uh, these like fringe conservative Christian groups, the um, survivalist kind of <laughs> groups. Yeah, we're preparing for I Armageddon. Like the, I, I like the I like the Church of the AK forty, the yeah. Church of the M sixteen, M four. We put the arms in Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you know. Um, it's twenty gauge church, um, but uh, you know. Um, right. So obviously you've got. To I mean, I mean seriously, somewhere. you know, is you know. The, you know, and the, as the, the author of this puts it, you know, uh, but unless she just wants to declare every kind of belief preemptively re- legitimate, there has to be some sort of cutoff. Right. And and so where is that? And, and you know, I really think that somewhere along, it, it falls somewhere around the area of um, preventing others from... Um, where it, it gets in the way of other people's lives. Right. Um, so, you know, for instance, the, the point of a dress code is that you don't want things that are distracting people in church or in school. I mean, um, all right. You've got, you know, with our, our schools have a rule that 
your um, shorts or, or skirts or anything like that have to be um, longer than your fingertips when your arms are at your sides. All right. Which is kind of rough because some kids have longer arms than others. But, um, yeah, man, Dale, I don't know how long a skirt that mean for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have, to wear, I have to wear really long skirts. <laughs> Yes, he had to see him Sunday morning, man. Long, brown, long white skirt he's got on there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's longer than my fingertips. <laughs> but, um, right. So, you know, if, if I, all right, I mean, you know, and, and I don't know what if a person, if a person has tattoos, you know, well, you can't really tell them you need to take those off before, you, you know, and you can't really necessarily make them cover them up depending on where they are. I mean, I'm trying to sit here and look and going, yeah, I think, you know, disruption in the classroom is the key thing. I can't figure out how a no stud is disruptive in a classroom. Yeah, especially nowadays. It's not that big of a deal. Right. You know, I don't like them. Yeah. But I, I mean, you know, my daughter, you know, Vanessa was attending a Nazarene school. I mean, these things, people are serious holiness people. And the girls in the office working there all had no studs. I mean, nobody even thought anything about it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, this seems kind of strange, but, you know, talking about this, this church of, you know, body modification, and especially talking about like self mutilation and stuff like that. I, you know, I hear self mutilation and, you know, and if, if this involves children, I'm on the phone with children's services, you know? Um, right. but, uh, I mean, it doesn't say that, that they involve children with that part of it, but, um, you know, the, it seems the, the nose piercing thing's a little extreme. Um, and, oh, uh, nose, no, no, well, the, the, I don't think nose piercing is extreme. No, I, I mean, a lot of the other stuff that it. they do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, real against it is, oh, def, I think it's like extreme, but I mean, um, but again, you know, can I wear this bunny costume, or do you prefer me in this taffeta tutu? If you're going to have a dress code, you want to make it as easy for a teacher to enforce as possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really, you know, so you just say, no, 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 studs. You know? And, and, and it's easy to, it's easy to see if somebody's breaking, it's easy to enforce it. You'd probably get if if you if the parents took you to court, you'd probably get ruled out. But uh, you know, I mean, I know that's the problem. You know, we've had um, you know my own kids. You know, being you know going to um, a Lutheran school and my son going to an evangelical high school and dealing with the dress code. What I don't have a problem with, you know, somebody else might. Right. Right. And, you know, so it's just easier just to say you can't wear anything. Well, you know. of course, it's further complicated here by this girl. In this case, the girl's mother's a member of this church, too. Right. And it's a, this is a public school, too. So right. they, you just have more freedom in, you know, a personal dress code generally in a public school. Although some have uniforms. That simplifies things. Right. I've become a big fan of school uniforms. We don't have them. I wish we did. <laughs> Dale thinks all the students should be wearing orange jumpsuits. <laughs> like a prison suit. Tough them, boys. We're putting this dirt bag away. So. That's Dale's idea of a school uniform. <laughs> but... Um, you know, uh, uh, the reality is, though, um, you know, I I don't, I don't know. Uh, you've got to draw the line somewhere. I think the school district's drawing it in the wrong line, draw, drawing the line in the wrong place here. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah, you, you do have to draw a line. Yeah, I think they're going to lose. Yeah. They need to move the line. You know, I, I think that what they need to do is is sit down, you know, Sit down with a parent, right, and say, all right, here's the thing. We're trying to avoid distractions in class. Help us find that line. You know, where do you consider that line to be? You know, because we can't 
We can't have people saying, I'm a member of the Church of Unity. And, and you're not there. We're not saying you are, you know. But, you know, we've got this rule and, and we're willing to work with you and, and, um, you know, and, and change that rule. But we've got to enable, we get, we still have to keep classroom decorum. Right. So. And, you know, I mean, if you're going to do this, at what point, you know, would body, mo- this body modification stuff become, you know, a uh, distraction? Right. I mean, at what point does it become, uh, um, you know, self mutilation? So I'm a member of the Church of Body Modification, so I'm going to start cutting myself. I got news for you. Up here, you walk in and you cut yourself. I don't care what religion they say you are. They'll tell your parents flat out, not coming back till she's had a psychological evaluation. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And and if the parents are encouraging it, you know, that kid can end up in foster care. That's right. Boy, there's a religious freedom issue for you. <laughs> uh, Massachusetts wouldn't care. I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah, you know, but I, I, it would make for interesting blogging. <laughs> and you know, there's a, there's a now there's an actual story as opposed to a guy saying let's all burn Qurans. There's a story that would actually be worth the press picking up and actually discussing. Where yep. is that line? All right, because I, you know, I don't as a as a society. We haven't figured out where that line is, you know, and, and as the churches, sorry, can't help you. You know, I don't know where that line is. The Bible doesn't say, I, I did have parents one time ask me, Hey, does the Bible say anything about tattoos? And I said, well, there's a passage in uh, Leviticus about it that, um, I think it's in Leviticus that, uh, that, so that talks about, you know, that you shouldn't do it, but. That, that passage could, um, you know, it, it, what exactly is it talking about tattoos? Is it talking about, um, you know, piercings? Is it, you know, it's, it's sort of the word there is, we're not exactly sure what it means, you know, and, but really that was, that was part of the whole group of, um, sort of don't be like the pagan nations. And, and so don't, you know, it, it would be the sort of modern equivalent of, of saying, you know, um, don't have the Quran read in your church. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, so, so I say, I, you know, I don't think that the modern understanding of tattoos is, is anything like, you know, what that's talking about. You know, there's, there's, there's health issues and there's a question of, um, you know, when you're, they're asking, talking about their teenage son and, and saying, you know, are, are you, is this really something that, that you want to do that you're going to want that there for the rest of your life and, you know, and stuff like that sort of more, um, sort of, uh, kind of common sense kind of questions and, and, and things like that. But as far as scriptural support and like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty vague and, um, and, and doesn't really specifically say yes or no. And, uh, like, could you, could you send me that passage? Okay, but you know, don't misuse it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it turned out that he got the tattoo anyway, and they're like, well, we're not real thrilled with it, but you know, it could be worse and and that. But um, <clears throat> which brings us to a church down in Anaheim, California. Yep. Um, and there's a 26 year old pastor, Kyle Bonneberger, I guess they just say Pastor Kyle. So it looks like he's somewhere in his 30s, if you ask me. For some guy who's 26, man, he looks like he's like about nine years, eight or nine years older. It looks like he's about 35. Anyway, so uh, um, they just, uh, it's a brand new church plant. It's uh, been around for one year. And they um, <clears throat> have uh, about 100 people in church. And he said, hey, if I, if we can get 200 people here on Sunday morning, I'll have my the um, church's logo put on a tattoo on my arm. And um, they meet so, in a local punk rock club called Chain Reaction. Um, so on, um, they got um, over two hundred people, and he got his tattoo. That's it. End of story. <laughs> 
Well, there were also um, there was one other person said that they would that he would also do it, and then um, he and then a bunch of other people said that they would also do it. He and five others were able to get their tattoos on Sunday before the tattoo artist had to leave. Uh, other six congregants are getting appointments to get their tattoos. Right. Now, one thing, a couple things about this. Uh, yeah, it, it's um, yeah, it's a it's a circle that has I don't know, it's broken in four places. It's, just, it's, it's a, supposed to be kind of a ghosted cross. cross. Yeah, which, and then a heart in the center. I'm sorry, I look at that thing. I I don't see the cross there. I mean, yeah. I mean, I see where you would be there, but I don't think most people would pick up on it. I I didn't until I read his description. I went right. Oh, okay. Because I was like, what the? What's with that symbol? It's just a broken right. circle, you know. It needs to be, um, I think, a little bit more obvious on the cross there. Um, yeah, but it's pretty cool. I I I think it's pretty idea. Yeah, they'd meet at this local punk punk rock club, uh, the Chain Reaction. Uh, they meet there for free. Nothing else going on. Yeah, uh, Sunday mornings are punk club. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, which is great price. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, it's got lights. It's got a sound system. And, hey, you know what? People who, who aren't going to walk into my church and listen to our organ, uh, no matter how good our organist is, uh, and no matter how awesome our new organ is in our church, <laughs> um, you know what? They may walk in something like that. Mm-hmm. Although, although we had a new mission up here and just outside Boston, uh, and they had their first public worship today, and they they were at 183 for their first worship service. So, you know, I'm wondering what's wrong with this guy and his punk rock club that he's been at 70. <laughs> so, what? Uh, I, I'm I'm just curious with that with that new one. What kind of building are they meeting in? They're in a um. I uh, middle school, middle school cafeteria. Oh, okay. Interestingly enough, um, the same middle school was the site of a um, uh, conservative Baptist mission launch about uh, 15 years ago. That's very successful. So, hmm. see, okay. I've got a question. Now, how many people might find meeting in this punk rock club to be just as intimidating? As going to a church. Yeah, that's true. Because, you know, it's it's one thing to say, like, we're meeting in a local bar or something like that, right? But a punk club, that's something completely different. Now, if you're trying to meet, if you're trying to reach a certain segment of people that would be at that punk club the night before, then that's the place to go. And he seems like the kind of guy that would be very comfortable around that group of people. Right. Except for the fact I'm not sure how many of them are going to be up on Sunday morning. True. <laughs> uh, so they're probably going to be uh, sleeping off the punk club the night before. Although, you know, I've got to say that, um, you know, uh, statistically, if if you're trying to reach unchurched people, Sunday morning is the time to do it. That uh, an unchurched person uh, coming to church the first time is more likely to come on a Sunday morning than any other time. Which I was surprised to hear that, because I, I, for the same reason. It's Saturday night, you know, is is a time to be out, and it's a social time and, and stuff, and so to get up early on Sunday morning or whatever, um, or even to get up kind of late, but still to, you know, to make a point of going to church on Sunday morning doesn't seem all that likely. Um, but yeah, that's I, I think it's just because as much as as much as de churched as our culture is, they still know that Sunday morning's church time. And that just seems what's that just seems right. Right. I think that's generally right and that makes a lot of sense uh, up here. Um you know, because it's such a heavily Catholic area, uh, a, a good alternative time to start to, to meet people is Saturday evenings. Because a lot of these people were de-church Catholics who the Saturday evening mass was huge. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the other thing, though, is that on Sunday mornings, there's not usually a whole lot going on. Maybe a couple, like, soccer games or something like that with some local leagues. Um, but besides that, 
there's generally not a whole lot going on on Sunday mornings. And so you're not going to run into a lot of scheduling conflicts where Saturday nights there's, there's stuff going on, you know, you're going to run into conflicts. Oh, up here. Soccer games, hockey games, softball games, uh, baseball tryouts. Um, I've got football games. Well, right, um, right. There's all kinds of stuff. You know, well, yeah, uh, uh, and we have a lot of young families, a lot of kids, and all that stuff's all on Sunday morning. Uh, I've had uh, members of my church, um, you know, well, he's a guy who's, you know, uh, our interim organist, and he had to leave his kid soccer, hockey game, come over and play organ and get back to the game afterwards, you know, go pick his kid up, you know, and stuff. It's, you know, it gets crazy sometimes. It really does. Yeah. That's sad. And that's a whole separate, you know, issue. Of... Yep. It's a, a whole another issue. I have one kid in confirmation, and it's like, well, I'm in soccer through mid-November, um, and we've arranged with the coach, if it's okay with you, that, you know, I'll be in class one week and I practice the next week. You know, and she's a good kid. She'll, she'll do what anything I say to, for work. So I'm going to have to get creative and say, okay, well, what can we do? Hey, you know what I do um, for my kids that can't be there? I audio record the classes and um, I, I'd, I'd like stream them and, and save the video. But, um, right now the way we're set up streaming, it would go out public and I don't want with the kids, um, there and stuff. I don't want that going out public. Um, and plus I, I don't want them feeling uncomfortable talking and asking questions and stuff. Mm. Um, but I mean, you know, if you could just like video record it or something like that, um, and, and make that available. Um, but yeah, I, I audio record it and then I post it up. I, the confirmation section of our website is mostly private and, um, and so I can just post the audio right up there and so that anybody that missed class can listen. It's definitely not the same as being there. And I, you know, I emphasize that don't consider this a, a viable alternative, but it's there for those occasional times that you can't make it. So. Yep. Okay. Any other comments then about our buddy out there in California? Uh, so did, what are you going to do, Dale, to get your church up over 200? <laughs> well, I'm not getting a tat, that's for sure. Um, I, I have nothing against him. I've, I've, I've thought about it. I, I kind of like the idea, actually. Um, but my wife's not real thrilled with the idea, and I love her, and, um, and so I'm not gonna do that. But, um, you know, I, I, I like the idea of, of putting a, getting a cross right over my heart, you know. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> although I, I'm not real big on needles, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Um but and I I do like our our church's logo. And um it's a it's a cross and a shepherd's crook. And um and and so I you know that's a a, a pretty good sign. But then I get a call to another church or something like that. It's like uh yeah. <laughs> so um I had to tell him, you know, you'd become a Browns fan. You know, you got over 200 people. <laughs> you know, I did in my children's message. I was talking about, uh, it was last week. I was, I was talking about, um, how, you know, who does God love? Does he like, um, does he like bad people? Does he like, you know, people that like ice cream? Does he like, you know, all this kind of stuff? And he goes, and I said, does God love Cleveland Browns fans? Like, yep. I said, yeah. And they really need a lot of love. <laughs> <laughs> the whole car is gonna. <laughs> hey, they didn't get any love from LeBron. The Cavaliers didn't, so you know somebody's got to love them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody, this kind of ended tonight um, on this wonderful Kansas City Trounce Cleveland weekend. Uh, so uh, uh, take care. Have a very good weekend, God's grace, and may His love shine on you daily. Good night, everybody. God bless you.